Ingle is now commonly referred as the battery savvy, and that's partly because of multiple spawns in one. And for this video, I will cover the surface. This spawn is located in its own island called Ingle. You get there with an NPC in Cormaya, but first you will need to start a quest with Hispara by entering the teleport also in Cormaya. Say passage, yes. Then you will be able to sail to Ingle with Hawk Horse. This is enough to hunt in the area that I will be focusing on for this video, the surface. However, continuing on the quest line, the Cradle of Monsters unlocks more floors, which are also huntable and each is different from the previous one. I covered minus one previously as it is a good starting point to get charms to hunt the surface, but also the most popular one will be minus three, which is one of the top tier experience spawns. The others are just not that great at the making of this video, but still, by completing the quest, you unlock access to monster, a pretty good boss to farm. Now for the surface you will encounter mostly 3 monsters, the Cravemans, Rinders and Harpy. The Harpy are the ones with the least density out of the 3, but you also encounter very few of the other 3 creatures from the Peringle, because at least the lap I recommend doesn't have many of them. But towards the right side of the surface you do encounter more Bormans and Lyodiles. The focus of the surface is mostly profit, all of the creatures are pretty good for that, but the experience is not that bad either. You do take a cut on XP compared to other spawns of the level range, but for higher profit, which is a fair trade, and also the difficulty of the spawn can be quite high, but that's also something that is self-imposed as you have the freedom to push for bigger and harder pulls, and that in turn is what will make it more difficult and rewarding. However, do keep in mind that the pulls with many harpy will be hard on everyone, as they have a chain attack that bounces off, and overall do a lot of damage in AoE as energy. Not only that, but they also lower the skills of EKs and RPs, so their damage is lower in general throughout the hunt. To hunt here, defensively, is highly important to stack up energy protection as the mages, but for the EK, the main damage source will be physical by far, with energy and earth. Offensively, go for avalanches or GFP. The benefit of ice is doing more damage to the Cravemans, which have the most HP, but GFP hit harder on Rinders, which have more density. EK can go with either elemental weapon, or use a death type if available. For us, we started to hunt this place at level 366, and the pools were more control, often with a box on me and the paladin luring another. It was doable that way, and it's not a bad point to start. However, I would recommend the spawn for a higher level so bigger pulls can be done. For either one, the lap is still the same. What changes is the amount of creatures the paladin lures. With that said, the first pull will be eased by the boat, usually coming from the left and grabbing monsters nearby. The paladin goes further southeast to lure a few more. This pull is easiest and could be done further to the right to make it harder. The next one is more to the right past the river. For the big pulls, I will place one or two energy bombs, mostly to do a bit more of damage, since shooters will be running in circles around my box and the bombs offer more damage from me as long as the bomb is placed at the beginning of the pool before I get surrounded. For this one, the paladin goes southeast and comes to us, usually bringing around 10 more creatures. Next pool is straight up north. If you wanted to make this one a bit easier on the mages, you could set up closer to the bridge and then they hide behind three walls, but we say that for the next pool. For this one, we set up to the northeast as that is closer to the lure from the paladin, which comes from the further northeast and ends up being more than 8 creatures. And this one has plenty of empty space to run around, which is nice for the shooters. Next up, backtrack a little and EK and Paladin go past the bridge, while the mages stay on it and use a tree wall. For this one, EK picks his head to the south to bring monsters for a box. Meanwhile, RP goes northwest to lure. Usually by the time he comes with the lure, the box on the EK is close to dying, so it is easier to drop creatures on him. And by then, the mages can leave the trap to wait the monsters, which can also be done from the start to clear the monsters on the EK sooner. It just might make it harder for the EK to grab the second lure sometimes, but mostly it's also to give some room to the the mages to recover their mana, since the last two pulls have been difficult ones, so it's a good chance to slow down a bit. Next one is to the left, EK going through the north of the stone to grab the monsters from there, and Paladin lures from the southeast and south. This one has a spot for two tree walls for the druid to hide which is optional. Not particularly a fan of it to be honest, but it's up to the druid to use. Next pull is to the southwest of here, once again with plenty of space to move around, and the Paladin lures some extra monsters from the edge to the left. Hunting like this at low level 500 with charms on the main three creatures, we were doing around the 4.3k raw XP, with somewhere around 500 to 600k profit per player the hour, which is pretty high number for team hunts of this level range. Additionally, the spawn is 
still has room to improve, as later on with about 130 levels higher, in average we were doing close to 5k raw, no foolish harm, and close to 750k profit per person. And during an even more recent hunt where the Paladin didn't have charms but we were on average level 650, the XP got up to 5.7kk raw, and profit is misleading since it was a double loot event, but without that it should be around the 800k per person. So it is a quite decent spawn for a variety of level ranges, and as I said at the start, usually the difficulty will be set by how hard you decide to hunt it. That's all I got for this one, if you want more spawn recommendations for team hunts, check out this playlist. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Tuna Hero, Nightstar, and Tortoise Slasher.